Hi everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Caitlin and for today's video, we are going to be reorganizing, organizing my bookshelves, my book cart. You guys are gonna see all the books that I own, or not the books that I own, but all the books that I have currently with me while I'm in grad school right now. And I'm gonna take you guys along the journey. So first things first, I need to head to Walmart and pick up a new bookshelf because I need to reorganize my room and I have way too many books and not enough spaces to put them so that's where we're headed to right now and i will see you guys on the flip side but i'm excited for today's video because it's long overdue and when you guys see the state that my room is in you will understand why this video is very necessary it's literally like 95 degrees outside so we're gonna go That was actually one of the worst things I've ever experienced. It was so busy in there and way too many people. It was probably not a good idea to try and go to Walmart at 2.04 on a Saturday, the weekend before school starts. So that was on me, but I secured the bookshelf. Now we're gonna head home and assemble and get with some air conditioning. Okay, we're back now. So I am back in my room. I have changed clothes because I was literally dying of heat. So now we are back. Let me show you what we're working with and my plan, okay? So this, ignore this. Ignore this whole desk area. We will work on that later today. So this is my bookshelf right now. As you can see, it's literally hidden and I don't like the fact that I can't see it and it's kind of just like squished to the side. And then I wanna move my desk a bit closer this way to this wall so it's not so close to my bed. So my plan is to move this bookshelf and replace it over here. And then I'll move these um, drawers that I have like my clothing and stuff in and I'm gonna put them under my bed, which also is questionable. And I bought the other bookshelf, this bookshelf that I bought, which is the same one as the one that's currently in my room. We're gonna put those two together and then we're gonna put them both over here. And that's where my TV is gonna stand and I probably will have space for some other things to put on there. And then I will have my book cart probably somewhere in the same vicinity and my reading couch and my lamp and all that jazz. So that's my current plan. You guys are gonna see it come together. You're gonna be here for the whole process. But right now, I think the first thing I wanna do is assemble the bookshelf and then we will go from there. Also, I just have so many books. So you're also going to see the books that I have. So we're gonna go ahead and get started because it's already like three o'clock and I'm exhausted. and then try and situate myself. I'm like, should I move the drawers first and then move the table or, or then move the bookshelves and put them up? Or should I do the bookshelf? I'm gonna have to take all these books out of this bookshelf before I can even move this. It's gonna take a minute. All the things you never Alright, so this 
under my bed. I think I might switch out what I put in there because that's gonna be annoying having to bend, but that's gonna be there. And then the other one is right here. Those two are now gone. And then now I have this empty space. We're gonna put the two bookshelves here whenever I can catch my breath. Put the two bookshelves there and then fill up with books, which is gonna be the fun part of this entire video. Getting to the actual books. <laughs> so, we got the bookshelves up. I think I like it. I think I need to see it with the books filled. I'm trying to think if this is the position that I want to keep it in, but I think it's okay. I don't know if I wanna move it closer like this way. I think right here is a good position and I can put like my book cart on that side if I want to, or I can put it somewhere else in my room. And then we have like my reading nook area. So I think I'm gonna stick with this. Um, I know this wall looks very empty, but it's gonna come together. You'll see it at the end. I need to think about how I wanna organize it before I start throwing books on the shelves. So let me think about that and then we will come back. I have organized all of the books. So they're all organized of how I want to put them on my bookshelf. So now we are going to put them together and you guys are gonna get to see all of the books that I currently have with me while I'm in grad school. I would say again, like this is probably like 60% of the books that I own, maybe a little bit less than that. A lot of these books I have not read yet, which is kind of the goal. I didn't want to bring too many books from home that I'd already read because then it's kind of just sitting on my bookshelf. There's gonna be a couple of empty spaces because I don't think I have enough books to fill the shelf, but we shall see. We're gonna start with this shelf over here. I think I want to start with, I think I wanna start with some of my fantasies because they are just giving right now, okay? So let me grab, um, I don't wanna look like I'm segregating my office. Okay, we're gonna start with this one. We're gonna start off with this huge fantasy, probably the most intimidating book that I own. That is The Priory of the Orange Tree by Samantha Shannon. I don't know when I'm ever going to get to this, but I love seeing it on my shelf because it just motivates me that one day I will get to this. I think when I finish reading this book, I will have like one at life. I don't know, I feel like this is such a challenge. It's gonna be the first book on my bookshelf. And then we're gonna do The Rage of Dragons by Evan Winter. He's gonna go right next to her. And then we're gonna do some RF Kuang. So I do wanna keep authors that I have multiple books of theirs together, even though they might be in different genres. That's just how I wanna do it in my brain. So I know that Yellowface is not fantasy, but I have Babel by RF Kuang as well, and I wanna put them together. So it is what it is. So we're gonna do that. I also don't care about heights and like, oh, this one, I just, I don't care. I'm putting these books in my bookshelf and this thing keeps like and I'm getting scared. And then we have um, Iron Widow, which I need to get to soon. Next we have The Blood Sky On. Um, as you can see, this was so cheap at Barnes & Noble, so I had to get it. Also, this cover is just absolutely gorgeous. So we're gonna shove her right in there. I don't think I have another one that's going to fit in this little space right here. So we're gonna go to the next bookshelf. And we're gonna put Blood Like Magic in here. I have not read this, but I'm excited to read it whenever I get to it. So she's gonna go there. One of my favorite series, Children of Blood and Bone by Tomi Adeyemi. So we have the first book, absolutely loved it. And then we're gonna do Children of Virtue and Vengeance, which I have not read yet. And I do believe she is coming out with the third book in the series very, very soon. And then we are going to do Legendborn by Miss Tracy Dion. And then we're gonna put, of course, Bloodmarked, the second book in the series right there. Let's do a Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is the prequel to the From Blood and Ash series. I need to finish the series. I've talked about this, I feel like, before, but I'm on the third book in the Blood and Ash series, but I had to take a break because I was just... Miss Jennifer was losing me. She was losing the plot and she was losing me. But I've heard really good things about the prequel series, so I need to eventually get on that. So we're going to put her right there. Do I want to go this way or do I want to start with the next shelf? I feel like I want to start with the next shelf. So the next shelf, we are going to do Six of Crows by Miss Leah Bardugo, AKA The Queen. And then we're gonna do Crooked Kingdom by her as well. And then we are going to do The Stolen Heir by Holly Black, How the King of Elfam, El Elham, Elfham, whatever, learn to hate stories. If you watched my unhaul video a couple, like a year or two ago, you're gonna be shocked that I still have these books. My friend convinced me to give this series another try, so we're gonna do that eventually, but I have A Court of Mist and Fury 
and A Court of Thorn and Roses by Miss Sarah J. Mass have the OG covers, which I personally think look better than the ones we have going on now. And I technically know I should put it like this first and as far as like the order, but I don't like that. So we're gonna put it out of order, sorry. And then I also have Throne of Glass in the original covers as well. Kingdom of the Wicked by Carrie Maniscalco. I wonder if I can put her here. That's all of my fantasies. So fantasy, three shelves. So we're gonna move on to, I guess like thriller and like mystery-esque. So we're gonna do Ace of Spades, which I read in my previous reading vlog, go check it out. I had a lot of thoughts about that book. And then we're gonna do the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. So we have Good Girl's Guide to Murder, Good Girl, Bad Blood, and then As Good as Dead. Let's not do that. The Last Word by Taylor Adams. Let's push that or let's do it like this. White Smoke by Tiffany D. Jackson. That This book is more of a horror, so can't wait to get into that. Then we have The Silent Patient. And then we have When No One Is Watching by Alyssa Cole. And we have Parable of the Sower by Octavia E. Butler. This isn't thriller, this is science fiction, I believe, but I don't know where else to put her. So we're gonna put her over here, so. Next, we are going to do, I think we're gonna go over to this bookshelf. I have so much romance, it's actually insane. So we have Miss Emily Henry. I don't have Beach Read. We have Happy Place, which I still have yet to read, but I will be reading very, very, very soon. Then we have People We Meet on Vacation, which I am so shocked that so many people don't like People We Meet on Vacation. I give this book five stars. And then we have Book Lovers, which read this year, loved it, five out of five stars. Let's do Miss Talia Hibbert, literally my favorite romance author. Highly suspicious and unfairly cute. So this is her young adult romance. And then we're gonna do the Brown Sisters trilogy. So we have Get a Life, Chloe Brown, Take a Hint, Danny Brown, At Your Age, Eve Brown. So we have two Abby Jimenez books. I have Yours Truly and Part of Your World. So we're gonna put those, maybe I should do like, so we're gonna go on to this shelf, Magnolia Parks 1, the series that literally it did a lot to me. Then we have Daisy Hates, The Long Way Home, Magnolia Parks, and we have whew, The Great Undoing, Daisy Hates. If you know, you know, this book, this book wrecked me. Now we're gonna do Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This is literally my favorite book, I think, like of all time. Not, no, no, mm. I take that back. Not my favorite book of all time, but like this book really changed the trajectory of my life as a reader. So, Me Before You. Refuse to read these two books, which are the second and third books in this series, but I just, I'll get to it eventually when I have the courage. I don't have it right now, but I have After You. And then there is Still Me. Let's do some standalones now. The Trouble with Hating You, Red, White, royal blue i've yet to watch the movie i wanted to read this book before i watched the movie i started reading this book i think i made it to page oh i have my bookmark in here 60. it's just not hitting for me i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm gonna give it another try not now but i'll give it another shot maybe i should watch the movie and that can re-inspire me to read the book i don't know so now we're gonna go down to this shelf maybe maybe i will fill all these up because now that i think about it i'm running out of space and I still have a lot of books. <laughs> Let's do Miss. Who is this? Allie Hazelwood. I had a brain fart. Oh my gosh. I have all of these books. Isn't this so cute? Oh my gosh. I literally brought this book from home this past week so I could like match it with these three. But we have The Love Hypothesis, which I've read. And then we have Love on the Brain, I've yet to read. And we have Love Theoretically, I've also yet to read. I think I'm excited to read this one more than Love on the Brain. We are still in romance, you guys. I just have too many. The Seven Year Slip, I almost said something else. I feel like she's not technically romance, like general fiction with romance and other stuff involved, but I have no idea where else to put her. So we're gonna put Miss Ellen Hildebrand over here. This is the hotel. Nantucket, The Good Girl Complex by L. Kennedy, Archer's Voice, and then we're gonna do Before We Were Strangers by Renee Carlino. We're not done with romance. Well, this is like romance slash like young adult fiction. I still haven't done Colleen Hoover yet. 
So we have Love Radio, which I need to read this very soon. Like this cover, I don't know, it just makes me happy. I like the colors. Purple is one of my favorite colors too. I need a thin book. Let's do Looking for Alaska by John Green. And then let's see if Better Than Fiction by Alexa Martin can fit in here. All right, we're gonna do If He Had Been With Me. Actually, hmm, I'm second guessing my, my books, my bookshelf. You know what I'm gonna do, y'all? I'm gonna take these books and I'm gonna put them down here. I love them, but there's other books I think I want to broadcast on the second row. You know what I mean? Still love y'all. And then we're gonna put these down here. So then we have Colleen Hoover. So we have Verity, we have It Starts With Us, and then we have Maybe Now. And then we have two more YA. So we have You've Reached Sam, and then All My Rage by Sabah Tahir. I feel like I can fit this one right here. And then we'll put Sabah Tahir down there. So we have these shelves and then these two left. I think I'm gonna move these books down. Yeah. I'm gonna take this book, The Regrets by Amy Bonifons, and I'm gonna put her here, I think it'll fit. Yeah. I feel like this is a very dark section and this is lighter. So we need to like balance it out. So let's do, let's do these. Okay, so these are books that are like general, literary, all of the above. They don't really fit in one genre. In my head, they're all in like the same category of books. When Women Were Dragons, Mame, and then we have This Close to Okay, and then we have Delay Weds Destiny, or Del, um, this book. I'm bad with names. Then we have Disorientation, which I need to read this while I'm still in grad school because this is set in like the academia setting and I feel like I know, I just know. Then we have The Vanishing Half. Then we have The Final Revival of Opal and Nev. This I've heard is similar to Daisy Jones and the Six. I'm not interested in reading that, but I am interested in reading this. And then we have Homebodies. I wanna see if I can fit Yinka, Where's Your Husband? Yay! This is still very, very light, and this is still very dark. Oh well. I don't know if this is gonna lighten it up, but we can try. So these are books that are like literary fiction slash modern poetry is how I would kind of put these books together. So let's do this first one. This is The, Sel <laughs> nope. the Selfless Act of Breathing. Then we have When We Were Sisters, This Is a Mother by Ocean Vuong. And then we have Clap While You Land, Open Water, The Death of Vivek Oji, Esther, which I started this book and I made it like midway and then I stopped reading it because I was like, no, but if I ever get back to it, which I might. And then we have Before the Coffee Gets Cold and then Black Girl Call Home, which is um, poems. So these are books that are like classic slash nonfiction slash older poems. That's how I'm categorizing this, okay? So let's do Hood Feminism and then we'll do All About Love by Bell Hooks, Little Weirds by Jenny Slate, and then I need something skinny. We can do James Baldwin, Jimmy Blues and Other Poems, Maggie Nelson, Bluets, and then A Room of One's Own by Virginia Woolf. I think we can fit all of them. Maybe not. So then we have this bottom shelf. These are nonfiction, self, not really self-help, but just like nonfiction psychology. So we have Man Enough by Justin Baldoni. Love this man. The Audacity to Be You and Attached. Red Lip Theology, The New Jim Crow, and Women Who Run With the Wolves. And then we're gonna add some of these other books I had. So we have Rest is Resistance, Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen, Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin, The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison, and then we have Passing by Nella Larson. And then we'll put these two. I am satisfied with that. I feel like it's a mix of things. I honestly did not think I would fill up all of this space with the books I have. Thank God I didn't bring any more books from home. So these books, the reason I'm putting all of them together, 
they, except for Bunny. Bunny does not match. So Bunny is gonna go right here. Actually, let's put Bunny over here. So there's like a pop of color down there. These four books, the reason I put these four together is they all deal with motherhood in some way, shape or form. Like that seems to be the common theme with these books and I felt like I liked that and I wanna keep them together. So we have The Push. Then we have Nine Lives of Rose Napolitano. Napolitano. And of course, The School of Good Mothers and Fault Lines. So all about motherhood, excited. Maybe I'll do like a reading vlog of just these four. We're at the end. I'm gonna move this one up. I'm gonna move up Love Radio and The Seven Year Slip. So now I have some books that are kind of just all over the place. So I have some school psych books or books relating to school psychology. So I have Hacking, Deficit, Thinking, Eight Reframes That Will Change the Way You Think About Strength-Based Practices and Equity in Schools. This isn't specific to school psychology, but it was written by two school psychologists, two that I've met actually at a conference. Um, I have that and then I have It's Always About the Children written by Charles Barrett. He's a school psychologist and then Today in School Psychology. We're gonna put these here and then I have books about books. So I have How to Write a Sentence and How to Read One, Reading Like a Writer, and then How to Read a Book. I do not want to explain why I have these books. We'll do that in a different video. And then I have The Half Life of Ruby Felding. Fielding. Um, this book was given to me by a friend and I don't know if I'll read it anytime soon, but yeah, put it right here. Yeah, this is the last book. This is Film For Her by Orion Carlotto. And we will put this right there. I think this works for now. It's okay. I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I like the mix of color. This is definitely like more darker, but I added some color here and there's a little bit of color down here. This has all like the bright, pretty colors. So um, I feel like I did a good job. Here are all of the books that I have with me right now. I don't know what I'm gonna put on my book cart because my book cart is empty. So I might not use it as like an actual like TBR book cart and I might just use it as like whatever. I'm not sure yet, but this is all the books you guys. Wow, okay, let me put my TV on here and then like make it look cute and then I will show you guys the final last look of everything and then that will be it for the video. But I'm proud, it looks really good. I have like, oh, I have a book journal. You can just put that right here. This is what my new space looks like. I think compared to what it looked like before, I really do like this. I think it looks so much better with like the books, you know, filled in and everything. I have a lot of books, way more than I thought. And honestly, looking at all of my books just makes me really happy. We have my cute little mermaid, my bee, my candle wick cutter. And then over here we have a candle and then a K for my name. And then of course my TV. And then all of my wonderful books that you guys just saw me put up. So that is it for today's video. I had a really, really fun time doing this. This was kind of like impromptu, but I thought of this when I was coming back. I was like, I need to make sure my space looks good before I go back to school. And I don't know, it just makes me feel really good to have like my space really put together and everything. So we're gonna fix up the rest of my room and make it look really cute and pretty. Thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a big thumbs up and I will see you guys in my next video.